and, budget. and because it didn't require special action of the council, therefore there was no need for a motion on the agenda. Correct. Thank you. And I thank you for um, reminding me of all of that. Dorothy. Well, you have just talked out of my knowledge. I thought that was a suggestion. I don't think we voted on it. So I don't think that's real. Um, and if you're telling me it is real, then I don't understand what you just said didn't make any sense to me. Um, I thought we still were going to have a chance to vote for increased compensation. We just had an election in which people ran with an assumption that they were very good chance going to get that increased compensation. I think that we can talk about equity all we want, but if we can't pay for some, then it's just, you know, words. I think that, um, you know, the amount of work that one does on this council is extreme. I'm only working part-time as an adjunct teaching two courses. I am totally exhausted. I've got work to do. I'm behind in grading my papers. If somebody holds a job and is on the council, I think that it's a really difficult, challenging thing. And I think that $5,000 is not really equitable. So that is why some of us brought up increasing the compensation because we felt it was essential for more fairness. And I, I do hope we have a chance to vote it and I hope that it would get supported. Thank you. Pam? Yeah, I want to just clarify what Lynn said that the first half would be the same rate as today. The second half would be the new rate. I don't think that's what you meant. I think you meant that the second half would be at a rate sufficient to equal the new amount across the year. So it would be more than just the new rate. It would make up for the lack of the new rate in the first half. That is I'm, not... I'm seeing people shake their heads. <clears throat> that I it was, that the, that, excuse me, that the, that the rate would apply from January 1 through Je through December 30, but the first half would be at the same rate as we are currently uh, um, paid till the end of June because we can't affect it, because we can't change the budget, but that the second half would have to make up for that shortfall. Year two, there would be the new full rate from start to finish. Does that make sense? This is the way I understood the motion. I, I understood the discussion. From the beginning of January, from the new term to the end of June, counselors would be paid at the rate they are presently paid. Starting in July 1, going to the following June 30, they would be paid over that 12 month period, the new rate. And then in the, and then as of July 1 of 2025, the same thing would occur. Andy, did that's I That's not how it? I understood it. That's not how I had understood it. Andy? No, I think that uh, the, the motion was uh, as Lynn described it. I do think that it's uh, worth stepping back for a second because mm -hmm. Finance Committee made a recommendation, but it's only a recommendation. Right. The, the action belongs to the council. And uh, so the distinction between what uh, motion was as Lynn described it and what uh, Councilor Rooney is uh, um, saying is um, what goes into the um, council budget guidelines that we provide to the town manager. And uh, so uh, what to accomplish the what um, Pam is saying, then we need to we, we would need guidance, um, which could come now, it could come later, because the uh, guidelines come to the council, and the, they belong to the council. And 
the what the process is that the uh, finance committee does uh, presents a draft uh, the uh, council discusses the draft and can say that it wants a change and then the change um, is considered at the next meeting after the uh, finance committee can amend the guidelines as the uh, vote goes so that there is a process for this um, whichever way it is done and uh, I think that's kind of what's being um, needs to just be focused is that this is a discussion um, it is not an action uh, it, it, but it's going to have to come back in some fashion and for the ex question of the amount to put into the guidelines for the next fiscal year um, they would be higher if we're going to make the increase effective for the year as a whole by paying uh, a double amount of the increase um, for the second six months as a uh, calendar year catch up. I think that what the finance committee was sort of fixated on in this discussion is that um, we were just trying to deal with the anomaly that exists between uh, the charter talking about Year, the calendar year and the um, fact that we operate actually on a fiscal year. And I guess the other thing that was discussed in the committee is, is that um, the charter actually says that for others, like people were saying, well, why isn't the school committee getting an increase? And the school committee um, under the charter could not get an increase that would be effective January 1 because the increase would have to be commensurate with the fiscal year. So any increase voted for the school committee would have to occur beginning July 1 with uh, a, a budget that gets to that amount. And so there was sort of like, there's this anomaly that we're treating the council differently from the finance committee. And I, uh, I just urge all of you to think about it, but you know, the decision ultimately belongs to the council as a whole. And just to clarify, Andy, because I, I think Dorothy was looking more for a motion, but you're suggesting that the resolution on this short of a motion that would start it sooner is through the financial guidelines. Well, the only way that you could start it sooner is if you uh, reduce the amount that's being put into uh, capitalist capital stabilization fund and use that money and say that you're going to transfer that money to the budget for the purpose of increasing council compensation. Okay. And I think that uh, Athena wants to be recognized. Athena. Um, so the, the council couldn't take that action on its own. The council wouldn't have to request an appropriation from the town manager in order to make that change in the financial order. So um, that would have to you know, be a vote to request that from the town manager. There would need to be amendments to the orders that are that have been referred to finance committee and so on. OK, thank you. Um, yeah. And I'm sorry, uh, yes. a quick note, the, the the what Pam mentioned about um, paying more at the for the second half of the year that was discussed by finance um, during the meeting and so there were really three options discussed and it was the second option that the finance committee voted so that there is a difference Pam between those two things and I think there was um, I have to go back and check my notes Andy but I think there was a reason why our finance staff had there there was a problem with paying those different amounts for the different parts of the year maybe Kathy knows Okay, I think we need to find the minutes and also the financial report uh, for this and make sure they're available for next meeting. The finance committee report is in the packet for tonight. For this meeting, right? Yeah. Right, okay. Kathy? That's what I was trying to address, Lynn, that we did discuss this, the issue with, Pam, and, and it, I think this is on the table for us to make a decision as a council, but if we tried to increase for that next six months, an amount that would make the 12 month calendar year 
equal 10, then the next time you have to decrease the amount that's in the budget for the council. So you have this very bizarre way of funding the council in terms of it goes, it goes up for six months, then goes back down, there's a bulge. So this was um, cleaner for the budget if we were only going to do, if we're doing it for half a year. And I think we need to fix uh, this. I think we could, maybe this is one of the charter fixes we should do, but it's it's just an awkward piece that a calendar year versus a fiscal year decision. So this was a recommendation to the council from the finance committee. We weren't, the, we aren't the decision makers. We were the recommenders. Right. And if the council doesn't want or wants to advance a different plan, they can do so. Shalini, you have your hand up. Um, my, <clears throat> my memory is that we wanted to increase it from the beginning of the year, even though it's awkward. Um, I, you know, in terms of a priority, we want the diversity in town council and even though it's not that much of a difference, um, you know, even 10,000 is not enough to really compensate for the time that people put in. But for some people that 5,000 extra makes a huge, huge difference. And I think if you want to invite diverse people on this council, we need to um, at least do this minimum increase and even if it's uncomfortable, awkward, whatever, I believe I would I, I support um, what we had intended. At least that was my recollection that we wanted it from the beginning of the year. So I would support that increase. Pat, you have your hand up. Uh, I'm listening to Shalene and I'm and I realize um that the increase can be helpful to people, but I also feel like the council is what the council is now. We had an election uh, and I feel like waiting to uh, for FY25 to make this a clean and efficient transition um, makes sense to me because that's what will affect the new council um, uh, or people, people coming in after this election cycle. Um, and yes, there are people on the council who could use that money now, but I think, uh, I don't see the point of, of doubling it up and, and then undoing it and things like that. I really don't. Are there I, any other questions or comments? Can I just clarify that? Yes. The, my understanding was when we agreed and that because that was before the elections that the people sort of who were running, I'm not saying they would have changed the decision or anything, but we did sort of make that, didn't we, before? I mean, now I we're did, deciding I... whether we want to do it from, I mean, that discussion happened after. The discussion that came up with these options, I think, happened before we ran for office. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we discussed these kinds of options. So I don't think that it that it's going back on anything or i mean i didn't support the increase so maybe that's why i'm having an easier time saying just keep it simple um so I, you know I, i'm not arguing with you i'm just trying to clarify yeah. dorothy um i'm a teacher we have contracts and when the contracts finally come through we get weird pay we get makeup pay and you know you're, um, this one, you're going to get this percentage. We live with it. We deal with it because it's a raise. Okay, um, it's not weird to pay people unusual amounts when you're doing some kind of catch up thing um, to make mix, uh, your year. People aren't going to say, "I'm not. I don't want this money because this semester I got this, and this this six months I got something else." I do feel that when people ran for the office, and remember, I did not run for re-election. That's why I felt free to talk about this issue because it's nothing that I will benefit from. But I felt that we made it very clear that we were really intending to do this as a way of encouraging broad group of people to run. So um, 
the idea that we're backtracking now, I find um, strange. Um, we don't have to have beautiful little even paychecks. People like their money when they get it, even if it's kind of weird for here and there. I think we should go forward with this raise. Kathy. Just, we are going forward with it. So just to, to put it at its simplest, in the first calendar year, if we continue for the first six months as is, then we bump it up, the person will get $7,500. In the second calendar year of their term, they will get $10,000. It's this first six months. And Dorothy, it's not so much that you get a contract with a makeup pay, it's what it does to the whole town budget. When we just saw that we're limited to 3% and it's a 12% increase in health insurance, we're gonna be in such a tough budget year this year we're looking at. So we're also thinking of let's not increase the pain with a, uh, an even bigger bump up for the counselor. So it is a bump up. So I just want to say, it's not that we're not going to 10. It's just the first year it's 7,500 and the second year it's 10. Because instead of bumping it up as Pam did with a makeup in the second six months. So at the end of, and it's weird for income taxes, by the way. So in any case, but, but the, I just wanted to say, it's not that we're not honoring the increase. It's the way the increase is being paid out. Alicia. Um, thank you, Lynn. So I'm wondering how actually inconvenient it would be to have to redo the portions um, just because so going off of the way I think Pam Rooney was saying that she was understanding the motion to be in terms of like the increase during uh, when we get to fiscal year FY25 budgeting process to have that be a higher number and then for the next budgeting cycle to have that go down. Is that actually inconvenient since we have to go through the entire budget process anyways? Um, so it's not like adding additional steps, it's just changing the numbers in the process that we're already going through. And so I'm wondering if that does actually pose some kind of inconvenience to have to change those numbers since we'll be changing them anyways. I, I'm while I am extraordinarily used to other financials, on a town financial level, how does that work? I would, maybe Holly should be here for this. Um, we would appropriate larger, larger sum of money in FY25. Um, and this would be to um, hold harmless the first six months of the salaries that people otherwise would have made right. the first six months of, of year to 2025. And then FY 26, we would reduce it. It would just be annualized at that point in time. Right. Um, we could certainly make the sort of paying the checks out is not, a, we would have personal action forms that would adjust the pay of the counselors for six months up and then six months down. Mm -hmm. Um the uh, the harder thing will probably be about putting aside the additional funds because you know as you saw in the budget tonight it's going to be a little bit tighter, but um, you know we can work with whatever the council wants to do on this. Okay. Um, Alicia, further comment? Um, yeah, I just I still think it's an important initiative in terms of trying to gauge more diversity, equity, and inclusion on the council. Um, and I understand that this initiative doesn't directly impact everyone on the council. Um, but I think that, I mean, and most of this, I think, is something that should be and could be addressed when we do the charter review. But this is just the way in which it's set up for us to do it right now. So it's not like there is another way to increase counselor stipends without going through this weird timing process, because that is how it is identified by the charter right now. And so it feels a little bit strange by, that we're following the exact process that we're supposed to follow, but it's still creating these inconveniences within our budgeting cycle. And that maybe that wasn't something that was anticipated when the charter was written. But I, I think it's important to recognize that strange thing that's happening here um and also to emphasize the importance of this initiative to keep people um 
diverse people like myself with children and families and single parents to be able to do the job of running for council. Um, and I would argue that this is an important initiative to fund from the beginning of the council. And I know that that's not as easily done as it is said because of, again, the way that it was set up by the charter. Um, but I do see the importance and the significance in making sure that people can be effective counselors and that people have the time and the opportunity to really dedicate themselves to this work and to to do an efficient job and also to do other things in life. So for, not for everyone is this, uh, you know, their major only major responsibility or the only major time commitment. And so juggling all of those things while juggling taking care of a family while juggling trying to do a good job on the council is very time and financially consuming. So I think that was the other part that it's missing is that for people like myself, it actually sometimes costs me money to be on the council, to be able to get help with my kids that when I need help to be able to do these things, to be able to have the time and the luxury to invest myself in reading and going through the materials, especially when we're getting them only a few days before the meeting. And there's just not a lot of flexibility in terms of actually doing a good thorough job. Um, and so I think that that's a piece that's missing from this conversation is that like, it does cost people money to be on the council if you're not fortunate to have those things. Um, okay, so at this point, unless I think this now rests with the finance committee in terms of the financial guidelines. Is that everybody's understanding? But, Kathy? But then we're going in a circle. Don't we just have to v vote and tell say what we want well I, mean, I just it went to finance it came back and now sending it back to finance we've already voted the increase it's the issue of when i understand so, so we have no we don't need a vote i mean finance will basically say implement right when There, there's been an understanding when finance committee finance committee made its recommendation. The understanding was that it would be incorporated into the budget guidelines unless the council right. voted something differently. So that's where things are. It's with finance committee in order to incorporate into the budget guidelines. There's no action needed by the council at this time. Finance committee is going to begin budget yeah. guidelines, and it will be in there. And that's all that needs to happen right, right now, unless someone wants to propose something else. So my my statement was exactly that it was meant to be that, and not and Kathy, it wasn't to say put it back into debate. Um, Mandy Jo. I was just going to clarify. Athena did it pretty well. So if the council wants to ensure that the FY twenty five budget includes enough comp enough council comp uh, money to compensate counselors for a full year of 10,000 starting July 1, then hold on, July 1, then that would be in the financial guidelines of increase the council department by 64 some thousand dollars. If the council wants to do what Pam Rooney was sort of talking about, then when the financial guidelines come to the council, the council needs to make sure the financial guidelines say increase the council budget by 94,000 or whatever that is. If the council wants to transfer money from free cash now, the council needs to vote or someone needs to propose a motion now or next week to request that the manager provide a financial order for the transfer from free cash. So with when if it's anything in the financial guidelines, there's no motion, there doesn't have to be a motion tonight. The motions would happen if depending on what the financial guidelines come back from in a draft. That's correct. Alicia. Um, Mandy Joe's explanation was helpful, but I'm still trying to sort through. So the town manager will put this in the budget guidelines based off of what the recommendation from the finance committee or just what he feels he should do like where is he getting his guidance in terms of what to bring us in the financial guidelines the finance committee develops the financial guidelines they bring them to the town council if the finance committee in the budget guidelines 
includes it the way that the finance committee recommended, then there is always the option during the discussion of the financial guidelines by the council to make an amendment to change what's in the financial guidelines. That's what Kathy, I mean, what uh, Mandy Joe was saying. If they, if you, if the council wants to do something besides that that involves this fiscal year, then it needs to be a motion to the town manager to develop a financial order, which moves some of the money from stabilization into the line item for council compensation, I guess. But that, like said, motion doesn't need to happen right now. That can also happen when we're going over the budget guidelines. It could, yes. Lynn, you would need something on the agenda. You would need to put something we, on the agenda. We would need Someone, to put something on the agenda either for next make... week or, I mean, if you want me to, I can put on for next week counselor compensation as an item. And that could be a time to discuss it, or you can wait until the financial guidelines come out and then it is on the agenda. Yes? No. We're in a little bit of a, a situation because we have financial orders that have gone to finance committee. Right. And in order to amend those to make changes, if the council were to re request an appropriation for compensation, um, it, it wouldn't make sense for finance committee to make a recommendation on those orders if the council wanted to vote something different next Monday. Right. Paul, maybe. So I agree. I think if the if a councilor would like to see the compensation increase starting January 1, the council should have a motion before it on Monday. Um, the on 20th. The, on the 20th, mm -hmm. before you vote on the, um, on the other financial orders. So that would be the way to do it. Okay. Yeah, because we'll need because those financial orders sort of balance out the budget and we would need to amend one of the financial orders or two to make sure it all evens out again. Got it. Alicia? Um, can I just request that that be added to the agenda for next council okay. meeting? Thank you. Kathy? The only point I was trying to make is we had this discussion in finance and we came with this recommendation. We've now been discussing it for a considerable length of time. If we want to change the recommendation, it would be good to have clarity on that, i.e. the whole group, because we'll put something in, we finance, we'll put something in the guidelines, and then we'll have the discussion again on December 8th. I am, I don't find it very, efficient's a bad word to use, but I, I find it circular. And I think it's because we don't want to vote on it. We've had these same three options in front of us now. for, uh, And they're, they're making everyone uncomfortable. I understand that because it's awkward. So I'm on the finance committee. I can have this conversation again on the finance committee, and I can have the fine conversation again at the council of how people want to do it. Or we, there are 11 of us here. We, we could say what we want to do now. Um, so, so that's what I'm grappling with because we've always had, we could take money out of cash and we came back with say, don't, don't do that. Um, do it this other way. So it's 11 o'clock and we started at six. So for me, this, um, it would be good to, if we can't end this, discussion with a conclusion, then I'd rather just end it. Andy? Yeah, question for Athena and the uh, charter. Uh, we have, if it's a supplemental appropriation, then there has to be, um, and it's recommended by the town manager, which is the first step, then there has to be a, uh, a forum that covers it. Uh, we already have the forum scheduled. Uh, what are the complications we're talking about? Yeah, I was just asking Paul about that, and we would have to hold the um, the financial orders until we could reschedule the forum if there were a vote to make a request for a different appropriation. Um, 
because that would be right, you, exactly right. We would have to do the public forum and so on on the new appropriation, and then there would be amendments and so on. So we wouldn't be able to do that on November 20th. That's correct. We would we would have to. Okay, let me try to sort through this. Um, if I'm sorry, Mandy Joe, go ahead. I move that the finance committee include in its draft financial guidelines a recommendation to delay to include implementation of the counselor compensation increase in the FY25 budget. I, I'm, I'm going to find the number I'm for, gonna... for to, uh, can you read my motion again, Athena, so I know where to put <laughs> what I need to add? Okay. You moved that the finance committee include in its draft financial guidelines and its recommendation to include implementation of the counselor compensation increase in the FY25 budget. Um, at, an am at an amount of $64,500 of the for the council budget. 64,000. 64, Is there, a, was there a second? I'll second for the second. That, that 64 is the correct number for a 10,000 for a 10,000 per counselor for FY25, 5,000 each half year. Is the, the, yeah. Yeah. Right. It's the num that, that would implement option two. That okay. motion would implement option two. So the increase would take effect on July 1st, and it would be the increased amount for the second half of the year, not the extra for the second half Correct. of the year and back and forth. Right. So it's consistent with the finance committee's recommendation. Yes. Thank you. Okay. The motion's been made and seconded. Alicia. Um, just a clarifying question. So it would be that for FY24, it would be total compensation, counselor compensation of 7,500, but the second year. So just literally what the finance committee recommended, but just putting that into motion. That's what it is. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. A motion has been made and seconded. Is there any further question or discussion or need for clarification? Let me just say what the motion does is put in motion that this is what will go in the financial guidelines. Therefore, there will be no need to change any of the financial orders or hold a different uh, meeting, a different public forum. Okay. Let's move to a vote on the motion. Um, I'm going to start with Kathy Shane. Yes. Andy Speaker. I'm sorry. Mandy Joe. Oh. I think it starts with me. Pam, um, I'm sorry. I didn't see your hand. Go ahead, Pam. Hi. Oh, okay. Fine. Pam Rooney said aye. Kathy Shane, aye. And Andy Steinberg. Aye. Uh, Alicia Walker. No. Uh, Shalini Balmilm. No. Pat DeAngelis. Aye. Anna Devlin Gothier. Aye. Lynn Griesmers and I. Mandy Johanneke. Aye. Anika Lopes absent. Miller's absent. Dorothy Pam. I I could not follow the motion, so I'll have to abstain. I admit it's very late for me. This is really remember it's really midnight. I couldn't. I have don't. I don't understand at this moment. The motion passes with seven in favor, two opposed, one abstention, and three absent. Um, the next item on our agenda is the dissolution of the 
African American, the African Heritage Reparations Assembly. And Dorothy, you pulled this from the agenda because you want, and I'd like you to speak to that. Okay. Well, I didn't really understand what the implications were um, uh, because I was just, the assembly has made recommendation, but that hasn't, that hasn't really been um, happened yet. So I just wondered what was the rush to dissolve it. There may be another story here that would be interesting to know, but I don't know what it is. So it was really just wanting more information. Okay. Um, the when As we finished up the reparations report, two recommendations were made. Um, one was sent to GOL, one was sent to finance. And the recommendation that was sent to GOL regarding a successor committee is still in discussion. And the recommendation uh, to finance uh, is basically will be resolved by the financial order that transfers the $105,000. Um, and uh, that's where it stands. The successor committee that's being recommended or whatever the successor process might be would then deal with the rest of the recommendations in the report is the way I understood it. But Lynn? The charge. Lynn? The charge that, I'm sorry, yes. Okay, Mandy Jo, go ahead. Thank you. So. I requested this go on there because when Michelle reported the as co chair reported on the report, um, she indicated that they're they were done. The committee was done. But in order to clean everything up, you have to dissolve the committee. So right. for for specifics, the charge itself, the ARAH charge has a term of appointment to quote upon completion of the report, end quote. And so there's no one on the committee anymore because the report has been completed and submitted. And the charge itself says reports, a final report at the completion of the assembly's work. So the assembly's work is complete. They've submitted their final report. And a, each person who was appointed there is actually, their term of appointment has finished by what the charge says. So the since we formed the committee, to clean everything up and be clear on everything, we have to dissolve the committee, but by their charge, they have no other work to complete. Dorothy, does that help? Yes, it does. Uh, thank you. I just wanted you to have some background on that. So I appreciate that. Okay. And we wanted to make sure that the motion, the way it reads, is to thank the American Heritage Reparation Assembly members for their work and dissolve the African Heritage Reparations As Assembly. I said it wrong earlier. And so I'm making that motion. I'm seeking a second. Second, Devlin Gothier. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments? Then we'll take a, motion, a vote on that. And we begin this with Kathy Shane. Yes. Andy Steinberg. Aye. Alicia Walker. Yes. Shalini Balmilne. Yes. Pat DeAngelis. Aye. Anna Devon Gothier. Aye. Lynn Griesmerson. Aye. Mandy Johanneke. Aye. Uh, Dorothy Pam. Yes. And Pam Rooney. Yes. It is unanimous uh, with three counselors absent. Um, we are finished with the motions, and we are now at the, uh, we have no appointments. Do we have any uh, reports from CRC? Um, I apologize. I'm actually going to give one tonight. Um, there were motions on here, and I just wanted to update the council on what's going on with a ZBA vacancy, just so everyone can hear that. Um, the bulletin board notice has been posted. Um, emails out in accordance with the policy to all current associate members and all people uh, who have filed CAFs within the last two years from the date of the bulletin board notice have gone out. We all have access to the emails if CAFs were filed, which means y'all know 
if you think about it, that no CAFs have been filed since the bulletin board notice went out. There is one full vacancy and one associate member vacancy to fill. And the ZBA will be doing a whole lot of special permit, major special permit applications <laughs> starting and starting now, but including through the next six months. So please get out there and recruit members or applicants to apply for ZBA membership. Okay. Uh, elementary. That's my report. <laughs> Thank you, Mandy Jo. Elementary School Building Committee, Kathy and Alicia. Kathy? Uh, our next meeting is December 8th. Um, we're, we're approaching the 75% construction paper. There are meetings started to be set up with the planning board and uh, the CONCOM comes first, Conservation Committee. Um, so we are um, on the road, hopefully, to go out with the first package in the early spring, which is the site preparation. So it, there's not a lot, the, the meetings now are getting shorter because the content of them is reviewing smaller design changes where it, we're at the point of talking about what the color of the floor might be, what the guidelines are exactly. We've seen those pretty pictures of the outside of the building, but will it be orange? Or green and so we will be making those decisions but we no longer have to decide <laughs> where you park and where the buses come in and out and someone has to fix the extra external roads for us thank those intersections are not they're they're going to be our problem as a school but they're not our problem as a design no let me just say pat d'angelis and i second that because having stood at fort river on the day of the election, you're taking your life in your hands at five o'clock at night from four to, from actually three to five. It is brutal. And then Paul drove up and said, boy, this traffic's pretty bad. <laughs> um, it's worse because Eversource hasn't finished their work yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was waiting for that one. <laughs> um, Alicia, do you have anything else you wanted to add to the elementary school building committee? Um, no, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about the little digression. Uh, Finance Committee, Andy. Yeah, just to uh, reemphasize what so said before, there's two meetings that are uh, posted for, or will be posted for this week. One, it's already posted for tomorrow, and they're going to have I essentially identical agendas because they're five items that are urgent for the committee to work on, which is why we're meeting twice in a week. And we wanted to have uh, the ability to talk about any of them um, in each of the meetings so that the Jones Library building um, project bond authorization, which was discussed earlier, the supplemental budget appropriations request, which is referred to the committee tonight, the rental registration fee structure, which we've been discussing at prior uh, meetings and are going to continue our discussion on. Um, during the, one of these next two meetings, the um, AHRA, the Reparations Report Section 3, that was referred to the um, committee and the budget guidelines. So that's uh, with those five very substantial items, that's why we're having two meetings. And you think this meeting went on long. Wait till you come to finance and we're still there on Friday night. Um, GOL. Uh, Pat. Our next meeting is this Wednesday at 930. I will be giving a full report for the, at the next council meeting. Thank you. Is there anything about the Jones Library building? No, we've all had enough of that tonight. Uh, TSO, uh, Anika. Uh, no, Anika is uh, not here. Anna, Anna is going to do this. Uh, <laughs> we will be prepping our carryover, me carryover menu. Um, also a memo on Thursday. Uh, and so we've got a lot of really, really thrilling stuff for the next council um, that will be. And then I believe we're also getting an update on waste hauler at some point as well. Okay. Any liaison reports? Seeing none. Town manager, Paul. 
Um, real, real quick, there was a suggestion that the finance committee meeting on Friday be a meeting with the council, and you said that that would be discussed later this evening. Yes, it's and so Andy, first of all, are you willing to have it be a committee of the whole? Yes, I, uh, I think that's a decision that uh, you and the should make with the council, um, or you should make as president. Um, we've done committees of the whole whenever there's a feeling that there's going to be more people in the audience who wish to participate from the council that um, trigger the um, fact that we then have a quorum of the council. Right. So that's why we do it is to cover that possibility. Let's post it as that, and then we'll see other counselors want to show up. Okay. And if they don't, we just have a regular finance committee. Thank you. Um, Paul. So you have my written report. Uh, we can talk more about it next week. Your meeting on Monday. It's pretty late tonight. Because we're going to have so much more time next week. Thank you. All right. I have no other comments. Are there any counselor comments? Oh. Alicia. Oh. Sorry, I just had a quick question for Paul. Um, I know that you said you're planning to present to us like a, another plan for the ARPA funding in sometime, hopefully in December. But I'm wondering if there has been any consideration um, around whether or not we might be able to have the BBAAA assist us in distributing some of the ARPA funds or in that decision making process. Um, we have that as one of the things that we're looking at in terms of the, uh, we've sort of added everything that people have requested um, into the list. And that's the things that the staff are looking through right now. Thank you. Mandy yeah. Joe. Yeah, um, I want to congratulate everyone who ran and won both at council and non-council, but also thank everyone who ran, even if they were not successful um, and, and did not prevail in their election. But I also, that that leads into what I actually am announcing, which is um, everyone should have seen if you're a counselor, I think everyone's on the MMA mailing list. There is a new counselor, a Massachusetts Municipal Counselors Association, the MMCA, um, part of the MMA counselor training for new counselors on December 9th, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And so you don't have to be a new counselor to go. And it is free according to the notice I got today. Um, and so if you're a counselor that was just elected and not on the council right now, make note of those dates. Um, but also for anyone here, um, make note if you're interested. It's in person in Devons. It's incredibly helpful. Yeah. I remember the group went last time and really thought it was terrific. Um, all right. Anything else? Mandy Joe, you still have your hand up. <laughs> uh, the meeting is adjourned at 1121.